There is nothing more all-American and all-summer than a great cherry pie. Thankfully, the cherries are just ready here at the farm, and I've been picking buckets and buckets of fresh, sour cherries. Cherries are a little bit of extra work to pit, but they are so worth the effort for these fresh baked goods. This pie goes together so simple, especially if you keep pie crust in the freezer like I do. I always have a few shells ready to go for the perfect time like this. To start, we need six cups of fresh pitted cherries. You can use frozen cherries too, but there's nothing like these fresh ones. Once you pit the cherries, your six cups will also have a little bit of juice in them. You want to make sure to use that also. That will get worked right into the pie. You should have about a half to three quarter cup of fresh juice sitting in the bottom of the cherries. Pour that right into a large bowl, cherries and the juice, and place one cup of sugar on top. Add a quarter cup of cornstarch, a half teaspoon of vanilla, or a little bit of extra if you like it, and a quarter teaspoon of almond flavoring. Pure almond extract is what you always need to use. If you don't think you like almond, you might be surprised. Almost all cherry pies always have a little bit of almond as they really bring out the true cherry flavor. But you don't need too much as it can overpower it. Mix that all together and then pour it directly into your pre-done pie shell. I made a 10 inch pie shell. If you're used to making a nine inch, you probably only want to do four to five cups of fresh cherries. And I would down the sugar too. In the description below, you can check out my favorite pie crust recipe if you don't have your own. Pour the pie filling directly into your 10 inch pie shell. For this pie, I think there's nothing more perfect than a little bit of a lattice work. It's the most quintessential cherry pie. To do this, I just made an extra pie recipe and flattened it out to a large circle. Just cut strips using a pastry cutter or just a pizza cutter if that's what you have. And then start placing the strips on top of your pie. You can see by working that you just place two down and then start lifting them up alternately as you're placing more strips until you get a great lattice. There are shortcuts to lattice works and you can buy press down patterns, but once you do a few, you can see they're really not that hard. The wider strips you cut, the easier it is to make a lattice because there's less. If you want to be really, really neat, you can make extremely narrow strips and have a lot more intricate pattern. Press the edges down and form them to whatever decorative finish you like. To finish this pie, you just want to dot each hole with a little bit of butter. You can do this before you put the lattice on, but I just always kind of think of it once I have the lattice on and then dot the middle with butter. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees and place this pie in for about 30 minutes at 400. Then turn it down to 375 and bake it for another hour to hour and a half. Such a large deep dish pie takes quite a while to bake. You know your pie is done when it's bubbling all around on the inside and you can tell that the juices are thickening. Make sure to let this cool at least for one to two hours. It's a really large pie and it'll take a long time to cool. This pie is perfect all summer long. If you have fresh cherries right now, make sure to pick them and make at least one, if not two, of these pies. Perfect for a picnic, an evening with friends, or any social gathering. Your family will love this pie and it will become your new summer staple. Thanks for watching this video. To see more videos that you might enjoy, click over here or click down here and subscribe to our channel to see all the great new videos we come out with each week. Can't wait to see you again.